Good morning, everyone. On this Tuesday of the first week of Advent, we have in the first reading the prophecy from Isaiah. I want you to hear these words through the lens of Jesus. I want you to hear these words and think about Jesus. It's amazing how the Lord fulfills this prophecy. I'll talk about that in the homily. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we call to mind our sins, asking the Lord for pardon and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord our God, as we await the advent of Christ your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice, and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt on his hips. <clears throat> Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like an ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. 
Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the King, and with your justice the King's Son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. He shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Behold, our Lord shall come with power. He will enlighten the eyes of his servants. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you've revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. This is the 11th chapter of Isaiah. And as you hear these words, Isaiah is making this prophecy. And what we know about our faith, you just apply it to the Lord Jesus and amazing things start to happen. A shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse. Jesse is the father of King David. And so this kingship that was forged from David's time then lost during the great exile, will be restored. And if you've ever seen an olive tree, the olive trees, as they, as they grow them, they can prune out the dead wood and new shoots will come up. When I was in the Holy Land back in 2019, in the Garden of Gethsemane is an olive tree that's about 2,200 years old. It was there when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. But again, they would cut out the dead wood and new shoots would come up. So something can hang on in the midst of storm and fire and the ups and downs of life. And in salvation history, how God is faithful to a promise, even when it seems like all is lost. Now, who is this who is coming? 
Someone who's got the spirit of the Lord, wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, fear of the Lord. And he doesn't judge by appearance or hearsay. He judges the poor with justice. Justice is a band around his waist. You have in Christ the one who comes with fullness and authority and power. But then what is unleashed? This next part that David shared, you have all of these opposites at peace. A wolf and a lamb, a leopard and a kid, a calf and a young lion, a cow and a bear. You've got this notion that a baby can play on a cobra's den. When the Lord comes, there will be peace. When the Lord appears in the fullness of glory with all of his authority and might, all is reconciled. There is harmony, serenity. And in this last piece, and when he comes, all people, even the Gentiles, not just the Jews, all people will come to encounter him. When we look at Jesus, And this one for whom we are awaiting in this season of Advent, we're preparing our hearts. We're making our own souls swept clean so that when the Lord appears, we're ready. He comes with power. He comes to bring harmony. He comes for all. And we should rejoice because he comes for us. Friends, if there's anything that we've got to deal with, Advent is a great gift. If there's anything that we need to make right in our relationships with God or one another, Advent's a great time to do that. This prophecy is fulfilled with the person of Jesus. We have hope. We have strength. We have courage. We have life. God comes to us to lead us, guide us, protect us, and bring us home. God bless you all. We pray this day for the church, Pope Francis and our bishops. We pray to the Lord. For all leaders, government, education, industry, business, that their decisions will be guided by the common good of all, we pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, For all who are on the margin of society and in need of comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. In gratitude for the beautiful concert here at Cathedral on Sunday, and looking forward to the second concert here tonight, for all of the hard work by so many to gather in this space to give praise to God, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers this day that in this intention, which is for Viola Westfall, we pray to the Lord. For all of you at home, for the prayers you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O God, we ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families. Bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Pray for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress and useless worry, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 